Well that was an uncomfortable experience. For the next few videos I want to look at films from around the world that have female protagonists and mainly focus on the way that their societies influence them. First off is Trishna, directed by Michael Winterbottom and starring Frida Pinto and Rez Ahmed. It is a modern Indian adaptation of Thomas Hardy's famous novel, Tess of the Dirtvilles. And since it's summer, I'm going to be making some eat and mess with a rhubarb compote. Shall we? Winterbottom has tapped the hardy well before, with a pretty faithful adaptation of Jude the Obscure and a less traditional Gold Rush Western version of the Mayor of Casterbridge. Okay. So he should be a dab hand at this. How does this one hold up? Tess of the Durbervilles is one of my favourite novels, so I'm especially interested in this movie. But if you do know the story of Tess of the Durbervilles, then this movie is going to be even more uncomfortable for you to watch. Because, as you know, Tess of the Durbervilles is not a happy story. It is depressingly fitting that it be quoted in Fifty Shades of Grey. Why didn't you tell me there was danger? Why didn't you warn me? Ladies know what to guard against because they read novels to tell them of these tricks. If you haven't read Test of the Durbervilles but someday want to, or you want to see this movie without it being spoilt for you, then go watch another video. For those of you who can't be asked to read or watch a film, Here's a quick summary of what happens in the novel. Tess is a beautiful country peasant girl. Her already poor family loses their horse and Tess is sent away to people who may or may not be her distant wealthy relatives. Alec, creepy guy extraordinaire, offers her work at the Durbeville Manor. He keeps hitting on her, granting her gifts, rescues her at some point, and something happens in the woods. It is left intentionally ambiguous as to whether or not Tess was consenting, but even if she were, the build-up previous to this shows that this was at best manipulative forced consent. Tess leaves, has a child, and is shamed by her community. The child dies, and putting her past life behind her, takes work on a farm where she meets Angel Clare. The two eventually marry, but when she reveals her torrid past to him, he abandons her and buggers off to Brazil, where he nearly dies. Tess lives in poverty without him. Evil Alec comes back into her life and over time persuades her Angel is never coming back. She lives with him as his mistress until discovering Angel did come back for her. She kills Alec and she and Angel run away to Stonehenge, at which point she is caught by the police and will be hanged for her crime. In Trishna, there is a similar structure to the story, but the big difference is that Rez Ahmed's character, Jay, is a kind of amalgamation of the two male love interests, Alec and Angel. The seduction and ambiguous sex in the woods still happens, but rather than the baby dying, Trishna has an abortion. But here's where the story becomes really different. Jay finds her in a Rajasthan village and asks her to be his live-in girlfriend in Mumbai. At first, things seem to go well. Trishna now enjoys a life of some luxury and freedom from the traditional expectations of her community. Jay, however, becomes more controlling of her, not allowing her to become a dancer, Jay has a similar reaction to Trishna's abortion, which she had kept secret until then, to Angel's reaction with Tess in the original. He leaves for a time, but when he comes back it is to go and manage a hotel back in Rajasthan. Trishna is downgraded to an employee at the hotel, and Jay continues to sleep with her. He finds the secrecy thrilling and becomes even more dominant and controlling. As in Tess of the Durbervilles, Trishna murders Jay, but rather than being caught, she returns to her village where family and neighbours still shun her, and kills herself with the same knife she used to kill Jay. Grim story all around. There are two things here that I really want to look at. 1. What purpose does the Indian setting serve? 2. How does the amalgamation of Angel and Alec in Jay change the main theme? India. Thomas Hardy has repeating themes in pretty much all of his works. A Victorian writer, he was concerned with industrialization, modernization, and the effect it was having on agricultural communities. There's a lot of miserable rural drudgery in his books, with long descriptions of how, no, peasant life isn't romantic pastoral bliss, it's hard graft in hard conditions. He also wrote a lot about Victorian morals and values, specifically their attitudes to sex. 
Tess is most famous for this, as it really focuses on the hypocrisy of how Tess is treated compared to men. Tess is punished by her community and her family for having had sex with Alec. The church condemns her baby. He's not baptised before he dies. When she finds love in Angel, the good Christian man, he immediately abandons her once he finds out about her sordid past, even though he has just admitted to a dalliance of his own. So the Indian setting of the movie makes sense. Rural Rajasthan has the poverty Hardy was so fond of portraying. The difference in wealth between Trishna and Jay in India, where poverty means not being able to send all of your kids to school, makes this disparity clearer than if it were set in a wealthy Western nation where the down-on-her-luck protagonist still has access to public education and social welfare. So here, the Powery symmetry between the two characters is much clearer. Rural Rajasthan also has sexual morals that reflect Hardy's Victorian England. There is still a lot of sexual shaming of women around the world, but here it fits with the plot. Trishna revels in the freedom of modern Mumbai, where she can get away from judgmental family. But when she and Jay return to manage a hotel in Rajasthan, she has to be a maid again and hide her relationship with Jay. It's just a good thing to give such prominent roles to Indian actors and showcase that talent. Frida Pinto is pretty great, and Rez Ahmed, who is a British-Pakistani actor, has been a long-time favourite of mine, ever since Four Lions. You know what, you're not a Mujahid, why you're a fucking idiot. Do you think a real Mujahid gives a kutti I learned about Rubadingi Rapids? Do you think he gets his dean from a book called The Cat That Went to Mecca? A book that he can't even finish, because it's far too fucking advanced for him. So, the Indian setting makes sense. I'm separating this video into two parts, because in this modern adaptation, I think the theme shifts away from sexual shaming of women to a discussion of abuse. And that all comes down to the choice of combining the characters of Alec and Angel in Jay. And that's going to require a lot more time to analyse. Come back for part two to hear more.